Howdy. Welcome to Texas Front Porch. I'm your host, Tex. Y'all saddle up with me and my co-host. We're about to sink a spur and go on a ride that takes us down some rocky and windy trails. We're going to do our level best to cipher out everything we can about all sorts of critters. Bigfoot, Dogman, pretty much anything that walks, creeps, crawls, or even takes to flight. Rabbit holes we're fixing to be poking our heads down is going to take a look-see into everything from abductions to xenophobes. We may not always agree, and that's all right. That, my friends, is how we learn. We will be conversating with a whole lot of interesting folks here on the old porch, and y'all are welcome to chime in. Just keep a civil tongue, and it will go as smooth as a fine whiskey. Y'all can find us over yonder on the Facebook, TikTok, Reddit, Rumble, or you can email us at paracrypidencounters at gmail.com. Or if you're feeling real neighborly, shoot us a text, 972-559-0988. Enjoy the show, folks. Hello, everybody. Hey. It's Monday. It's April Fool's Day, isn't it? It is April Fool's Day. It's been a very exciting evening. Gosh, from Texas, Oklahoma, into Missouri. It's been very yep. exciting with this weather. Yeah, we got storms moving through right now. So um, we're under severe thunderstorm watch. Um, and I know y'all had some stuff moving through. And so I yeah. know Oklahoma's got some stuff moving through, like you said. And Yeah, St. Louis has already been hit. Um, I was watching something earlier and, uh, I believe in Oklahoma, they had one touchdown briefly. Now I haven't watched since then, but yeah, yeah, it's been very exciting. So if you're all in those areas, Ooh, make sure you're safe. Get, you know, get in your safe spot real quick. Um, I had a friend of mine die. Um, we got to go up down to San Antonio to his funeral. Um, we're leaving tomorrow. Um, so if y'all could say some prayers for his family, I'd appreciate that. Um, just got a text That's from good. Jason that, uh, a friend of his just, um, passed away. And so, yeah. you know, uh, you can also shoot some prayers out that way too. It's been it's been a weird couple of weeks. Um, y'all are gonna see y'all y'all are gonna be seeing a lot more of me um, come Thursday, actually. Um, so yeah, y'all y'all be prepared for that. I know that's going to take a lot of. A lot of people, you, you get. I know. I, I'm. I can be tolerating small doses. I get it. <laughs> but you're fixing to get a bigger <laughs> dose. You're fixing to get a bigger dose. Um, we're also going to be adding something new to the channel. Um, of course, we got Monica's show. You know that just launched last week, and and uh, her second episode's coming up this week, this Thursday. Mm-hmm. But I'm going to start putting up some fishing videos. So y'all gonna be fishing with Tex. Fishing so, with Tex. Have, yep, and I and I'll have some people with me, and uh, you know that uh, some of them you'll know, some of them you won't know, but uh, you don't be surprised if you see Mary, me, Mary, me and Pops fishing, because right. every time we go out, we tend to do that. But I'm gonna start filming them. And putting them on the channel. Um, no, it's fishing, not fishing. The fishing, <laughs> no, fishing. So that's an I in. Not, There's no G involved. Right. <laughs> right. So, well, we, you know, the last time Kristen was on the show, something she told us, a story she told us, just got everybody's attention and uh, yeah. i wanted to go back yeah i wanted to go back over that but we're good there's there's some other stuff that she um alluded to 
that she was, you know, more stories from the ER and stuff in the hospital that we're going to get into tonight. It's going to be, a, it's always an interesting and great show with Kristen because I've been, I've been after her for a few years now trying to get her as a co-host on, on this channel. But my dear Kristen has commitment issues. And <laughs> oh and, goodness! <laughs> but let's get her up here real quick. Brandy, you want to go over the the, the show list real quick? Well, I can't yeah, we can do that real right quick. Now. I don't know what's going on. Uh, <laughs> I, I, you know, I talked to Randy the other night. Um, Randy Gilbert, our our tech troll. That's what they like to call him anyway. And I told him, I said, well, anybody who should know the show lineup is you. Cause he has to go through all of our stuff. I said, you should know what it is. He goes, I pretty much know. <laughs> I said, good. Cause I think you're the only other one, <laughs> but on Monday nights at 7 PM, it is Danielle diva in the diva dimension on Tuesdays at 8 p.m. Central. It is Beyond BMR with Bigfoot Michigan Rob. On Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Central, it's Donnie Cho Says Stuff. At 8 p.m., it's in Humanoids with Barton Nunley and his wife, Letitia. On Thursdays at 12 p.m. Central, it's Brunch with Bigfoot Michigan Rob. And at 7 p.m. Central on Thursdays, Monica's new show, Our Paranormal World, tune in we had a great time last week and at 8 p.m it's blondes and booze friday nights at 7 p.m central it's blondes and booze again if you just you know want to sit back and chat with us some more on saturday we don't currently have anything but i think that's where we're going to fit in texas fishing videos but we'll see <laughs> on sundays at 5 p.m central it is uh, Truth or Tinfoil with myself and Randy Gilbert. And at 6 p.m., Tex and Danielle Diva do their newest episode of Infamous Minds. And that's, and that's it. Yeah, that's it. And, and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> and any contact info, guys, y'all, if y'all need to, if y'all want to reach out to us, it's in the description of the, of, of these shows. So, you know, we got emails out there. We got a phone number out there. You know, feel free to reach out to us. As far as reaching out on the phone, text first because i you know it, it, you get a lot of spam and i and i you know just shoot me a text and uh let me know who you want who you want to get uh in touch with me or anybody else on the team and uh i'll uh get you in touch with them or i'll you can chill I, I like that did you see that text did you see that north alabama cryptid said okay. casting with text you know what? I'm still in the I process like that. of I'm, I'm, that. That's going on the list. That, <laughs> let's get her up here. Another oh, blonde. Hi, Kristen. Hi. <laughs> the one with commitment yeah. issues. <laughs> the one with commitment issues. <laughs> <Yeah>. No, <laughs> I, seriously. Uh, that that story that we talked about the last time. You know, I I can't say that that I forgot about it. I, I have to say that one has stuck with me and still has stuck with me. Mm -hmm. um, I think I've even repeated the story to someone else a couple times. Mm -hmm. um, she froze. It's it's just a wow. No, she didn't. She didn't freeze. It was you. <laughs> you got to look uh -oh. up, Texas. <laughs> Is it him? He's fighting grimness, evidently. Are you back, Brandy? Am I here? I see you. Okay. I, I did you see me the whole time, you're Kristen? You're, you, uh -huh. It's like watching the. No, it's you, Tex. She saw me just fine the whole time. Is it me? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because I, you you were like watching the Godzilla movie for a little bit on my oh, side. Oh, that's awesome. Your lips were moving, no. and then the voice would take over. Godzilla. 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 <laughs> okay, so this is well, you know, it doesn't surprise tell me, me. Is, it, is it me or is it them or is it her? So did did I freeze up? Because I didn't even see that I froze up. And normally I can tell. I didn't I haven't seen anyone freeze yet. 
I haven't okay, either. Well, it must be Brandy's signal to me or something. I don't know. Oh, no. Well, Lil, Lil Patty, Patty says it's you, Tex. Yeah. Okay. Well, I've got storms. It's thunder yeah. booming right now. So y'all bear yeah. with me. Yeah. The weather. Well, it's picking up here too. So it wouldn't have surprised me because I can hear it outside right now. So, so far, I think. So it's Kristen may be running this show by herself before it's all said and done. Oh, y'all don't want me doing that. <laughs> we'll just sit yeah. back and go. We'll freeze just like this. Yeah. Okay. You're just <laughs> Or we'll just pretend to take a break. <laughs> but anyway, what like so, I was saying, anyway, um, the story we were talking yeah. about. Yes. Do I need to re refresh everyone's memory a little bit? Or? I, I, yeah, I would go over that story. Um, and then we can go from there because that one. So like I said, if that one don't lead you to Jesus, nothing will. True. Yeah. Uh, I yeah. Sure. I spoke on here the last go round and told that story. Like it was on my mind fresh again throughout the night. And I even woke up and something hit the floor. Like when I was trying to sleep. And so I was like, what was that? Oh no. Are they coming after me? You know, it was, mm -hmm. I was on high alert. So it was kind of like reliving it again, but it put it back in, front part of my mind so but um just to go over it real quick or give a little background for those that don't know me I'm I'm an ER nurse worked the ER for 17 years now so I've seen a lot of crazy crazy things and most everything I mean it's medical you can explain it but you do encounter spirits and odd things that you just, you can't explain, not just me, but all of the nurses I work with have had something strange happen at one point in their nursing careers. Um, so hospital I work at, it's a small little hospital here in Northeast Georgia. Uh, it's a community hospital. Uh, you end up, like I said, if you don't know the person you're taking care of or related to them, you can about go down the line, oh, I'm related to this person, or yes, I, you know, grew up with this person. You can almost relate to everybody you take care of. So tiny little place. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I got a patient in one night and some years ago and uh, come in by EMS. I can't remember the circumstances that brought him in, um, but he did not make it. He passed away in our ER. And I cannot remember if it was cardiac related or if it was pulmonary related. I cannot remember. I've dealt with so many people and so many bad situations. It all just kind of blurs together. Um, but this, this gentleman, he was middle-aged man and comes rolling in our ER. And I can tell that, uh, you know, he, he's starting to crash on us. Um, Everything starts going downhill, you know, your vital signs, your lab results, just looking at a patient. If you're medical, you can kind of look and see, uh oh, like, uh oh, this is not good. You know, you get the color changes, just everything changes the demeanor. And in his case, there was a negative energy in the room, just a bad presence. He was screaming, he was yelling, which, you know, it's already a stressful situation, especially when you see your patient starting to die or the process of dying right in front of you. But he was screaming, he was yelling, um, which we encounter, but this was a different situation. He was screaming about his feet burning and he was burning. He was somewhere apparently hot. He was screaming, you know, they're coming to get me from what I can kind of piece together. He was actively dying and he was not seeing this beautiful white light or having this peaceful environment surrounding him that you see with a lot of deaths. It was a horrible, horrible, horrible death. 
even though we did all we could do, death was imminent. But before he got to the point where he was not talking, um, he was just screaming about burning. And I never will forget, like, looking at his feet and legs, thinking, you know, has he got acid on him? Or, you know, has he been burned? Is there electrical burns? Why is, his, why is he burning? And then after assessing, there's no reason for him to be having this burning sensation. And then between that and then him saying, you know, they're coming to get me. And apparently he's talking about demons. Yeah, I realize it's not medical. It's more on the spiritual side. So we will let there really <clears throat> an impression on me. I don't, yeah. I don't I know. It's like all over again. Like I can. I know it's, it, it, you know, it's, 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 it's so amazing. And I can't think of the term that they use, you know, cause we talked about this before about patients who are like seeing their loved ones come for them before they even pass the youth that, you know, they see them coming for them mm -hmm. and they like, they'll reach out for them or start talking to them or actually making plans like, okay, well, so-and-so is coming over, you know, tomorrow or whatever. Right. Um, but this is, he's feeling that heat at the moment of death yeah. and it's it's like he's he's caught in between both worlds and he's still here but yet he's feeling the heat up from somewhere we can only yeah. imagine right right and it there was no reaching for anything like you see in a lot of end-of-life patients where they're reaching for someone this was like thrashing and trying to get away like, even though he couldn't move a whole lot, he was doing his best to, like, move off of the stretcher. The, I mean, just a violent thrashing around, the screaming of being in pain, of burning, his, especially his feet. He kept saying, my feet are on fire. They're burning. They're burning. But just, just to make this crystal clear to everyone, he did not, he did not get in an accident or have anything happen to him where he would be maybe uh delusion by he's still in that that specific accident he wasn't yes. in an accident no 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 like i say i can't remember if it was cardiac related like chest pains or pulmonary related like he was having shortness of breath but one of those things brought him in and by the time he got in he was i mean he was starting to crash and it just gradually progressed to where you know, no matter what we did, any intervention, it was not helping. And he passed. I mean, screaming and kicking and fighting for his life or actually fighting to get away from whatever was coming to get him. But he he didn't make it. And I this is going to sound like a cold question. Uh huh. But was he in the process of screaming and just went no or it was he i guess um as he was getting closer to death his actions got a little less and less he was not as verbal um but you could see him digressing like he come in screaming and kicking him i'm burning him on fire to he's not speaking as much and then flatline but you could tell he was, it wasn't like he was screaming and um, thrashing around and all of a sudden, boom, he's gone. You could see him slowly progress, but I mean, all this happened within an hour's time. So for us, I mean, it's still quick, but it wasn't just like from right. one extreme to the next. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Yeah. So, well, yeah, quick, I mean, um, but can, can you imagine yourself even in, in, in good health? sitting there kicking and screaming and yelling. You can't carry on for an hour. You get tired. Yeah. Yeah. You do. Yeah. So real, real quick, um, North Alabama cryptid, Mr. And Mrs. Knack, uh, great friends. Um, says Mrs. Knack got some bad news on blood work today and they're asking everybody for prayers. So you've got them. You've got them. No doubt. Yeah. So please Absolutely. hold them in their prayers. Like I said, it's been a weird couple of weeks. Yeah. There's been a lot of that. And I, so, I don't know what it is. 
Yeah. You know? So when something we didn't get into, um, what was the, after this happened, what was the atmosphere or the mood of the other ER personnel? What did y'all, I mean, did y'all talk about this or does it like, okay, I don't even want to admit that that happened and, it, you know, or. Well, it was disbelief that we lost a patient and kind of shock that we mm-hmm. lost a patient because it's not that often that you get them in the ER or rolling in the ER that active and then they end up right. passing that quick. So it's. Right. I don't know. It's like your adrenaline's going. And then once everything is over, you work them, you code them, you know, you give them medicine, you do everything you can and nothing happens. It's just like, it's shock. It's disbelief. It's just a sad because you, you Mm -hmm. know, it's, I, I think I said before, every day I go to work, I literally fight the grim reaper on a daily basis. Like you're, you're totally fighting against death. Uh And so when that, when death wins, it's just, it's just awful. It's just sad, but you can only do so much. And I think in the room after, you know, after that whole chaotic situation and hearing him scream, we were, we were in shock. And at that point we didn't even really talk about that. But later on, I know I'm like, I cannot remember who I was working with. I don't have to remember who I work with the, most of the times, but I do remember there was some talk about how his passing was, how violent and how unnatural it was. And other nurses have chimed in with their experiences too. So I'm not the only mm-hmm. one to have that, something like that happen. Right. Well, did it surprise you, you know, that you- he went, he came in and thrashing around like that and then just passed? Did you, did you think he was going to live once you, once you got him stabilized? Did you, Yeah, well, he never really stabilized. He just kind of constantly went down on us. I mean, the vital signs started trending down. The lab work was trending down. You know, EKGs were trending down. Nothing was looking good for this guy at all. But a lot of times when they come in in that thrashing, yelling, screaming state, sometimes it's more you see mental, the psychotic state. Mm -hmm. You know, Mm -hmm. they may not be physically sick, but schizophrenia, you know, mental disorders can make people say and do all kinds of things. So I was even thinking maybe it's mental and then realized real quickly it wasn't. Yeah. Mm. yeah Cause I would imagine the first thing, one of the first things that y'all would do is um, a talk screen. Yeah. You know, you I mean, or a drug screen. That. <laughs> yeah. 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 And I can, I can't um, remember he was, he was so violent and just trying to get an IV site on someone that that's thrashing around. I mean, you have to restrain them and it's sometimes just hard to get IV. And I can't remember if we got a urine, we'll do ours like urine drug screen. So I can't remember if we got a urine or not, but I I do know we, when we jumped on and we, uh, we attacked him pretty good, but we were not successful. Hmm. You know, and what a lot of a lot of people need to understand about you know uh, ER personnel and well the the first responders and everything. You're very rarely seeing people on a good day. Yeah, it is generally one of, if not the worst, moment of their life. And that is a lot to deal with, you know, um, I'll never forget the first time I called time of death, you know, I, 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 there, there's, mm-hmm. yeah, there, there's, there's different things that you, you they stick with you, mm-hmm. you know, and it's something you have to carp- compartmentalize and then deal with after the fact. You can't let that get in the way with what you're doing at the moment, you know. And sometimes it's very hard. Yeah. Um. It, it but it can. The worst day of their life can turn into the best day of their life. Also, 
because they come mm-hmm. in if they come in, you know, in bad shape and and you know you are able to solve the to solve the issue, it turns into a good day, you yeah. know. And you know, th- those are the times you need to take home with you. Yeah. You know. And that that's but, the key for going. Right. That's the rewarding side of it. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, it, it's it can get it can get a little taxing, you know, yeah. emotional wise, because you have to, you know, because you don't want to go home and 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 you know dump all this, you know, on on you know everybody else, <laughs> or I didn't anyway. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, and you know, during my time I was an EMT, I, you know, you get hit, you get, you get, you get physically, um, uh, you know, verbally abused and, and everything else. Oh, um, yes. oh, yeah. You get called everything in the book. You yeah. Know? Yes. I've, I've been hit. I've been kicked. I've been bit. I've been stabbed. Mm-hmm. I've been spit on i've had all kinds of bodily fluids thrown on me yep. <laughs> the list goes on and on and yep. on so you were going to tell us about some other experiences that you did uh, not to, you've experienced but also that you've heard right you know? yeah yeah i've got a good one or my opinion it's a good one <laughs> um These two nurses that I used to work with have actually passed away. Two super sweet, knowledgeable, funny, you know, nurses that would have your back. That was, if if times got tough, you wanted them by your side. Um, But also, they were, they joked around. They had a good time but they were also very serious about their job and serious about what happens in the ER. And I think being medical, especially being in ER and critical care, sometimes our sense of humor isn't that great. It's kind of morbid, but you have to kind of laugh through, laugh through the bad. If not, you're going to cry. But these, these girls, they were, they were pretty tough. I mean, they were reliable. So this is actually a, story that both of them told me before they passed and it's has stuck with me I'm a little jealous that I wasn't there to witness this firsthand but I completely believe this happened completely 100% because they would not lie about anything like this so as I mentioned before sometimes the patients you get are mental health patients are they are psychotic you never know what's going to happen, what they're going to say, what they're going to do. There's just mental health issues. I'll leave it at that. So this um, hmm. this person come in, and it was a lady. This lady come in. She was a mental health patient. And at that time, she was in the last room on the right in the ER. I mean, it's which was we, it's a seven bed ER. We're tiny. Like I said, we're tiny. We run two nurses and a doctor, and that's it in the ER. So they had the ER physician who no longer works there. I never actually got a chance to work with. Um, He left right before I came to work there, and I've been there for 11 years now at this little hospital. So um, I was coming in, and he was no longer there, but I still work with, I'll go ahead and say their names, Tracy and Libretta were the two nurses. So they got in this female mental health patient, absolutely psychotic, screaming, yelling, hallucinating, you know, hearing and seeing things that were not there. It just uncontrollable. So this lady was on the bed, both nurses and the doctor were in the room with her trying to figure out what can we do? What medicine can we give her? Got to calm her down. What's going on? You know, ruling out everything. And I don't know if there was like a major, there was an incident or something happened or if this just happened. But both nurses said they witnessed her rise up off of that stretcher. They witnessed her levitate off of that stretcher. And apparently it wasn't just like 
little, it was a good levitation. I mean, head, feet, they said full body levitation. I believe them. I do, you know, of course, they said they believe she was possessed. I'm not someone to say this was medical versus spiritual, but I don't, I've never had a medical patient to levitate off of the bed. But they right. said it was the situation you could tell something was off, kind of like my experience. You could tell something mm -hmm. was in the room, the energy was off. And they said with her being so psychotic and if you, they described it as like, if you do watch the exorcist, the little girl, mm -hmm. her name, how um her, her movements, the way she talked, the sounds, they said she pretty much sounded just like that, you know, minus the head spinning around, but uh, she, she levitated off of the bed. <laughs> And it happened that one time. That is... It terrified them. <laughs> they ended up putting her in four point restraints. <laughs> I would have too. Mm. Like you're not, you're not leaving. Sorry. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. So that I, um, I fully believe happened. They wouldn't lie about, it. and neither one of them were laughing when this was being told. They were dead serious. These are the facts. Yeah. You know, and I completely understand that. And I, I mean, because the little girl's name in the movie was Reagan. Reagan. Um, that's right. But we all know, we all know that it is a true story, but it was about a little boy. Um, the family had moved to St. Louis near me and to get their, their boy help. They moved in with their family to get their little boy help. Well, do you know in this hospital, they had him up on the fifth floor. And after that had happened, they no longer used the fifth floor at all in that oh. hospital. And on top of that, when that hospital closed down, they turned it into apartments. They didn't even build apartments on the fifth floor. It is still vacant. Oh, that's amazing. I did not know that. Yeah, it's very strange. Mm -hmm. Very, very strange. Yeah, that you know, and everybody knows that that the house that this this happened in still stands. It just looks like a normal house in a cute little neighborhood. It's uh, it's a very nice house, you know. Um, so, so if if a hospital can say, you know what, we're not ju we're just not going to use that floor anymore. I believe that story one hundred percent that you're telling me. Because like I said, this hospital said, we are just forget it. We're no, we're not using it. Forget yeah. it. So I can see. I believe it. I absolutely 100% believe that. Yeah, I do. Same here. I have no reason not to believe it. Yeah, that's scary. But like I yeah. said, a big corporation saying, you know, forget it. We're just not going to use this floor anymore. Yeah. Something happened. Something, Something bad happened. happened. Yeah. Wow. Now, see, now you're going to keep me up with that one tonight. <laughs> so Gosh. have you ever, have you ever had patients that you brought back um, or helped bring back? Mm -hmm. I'll put it that way. That, that's always, that's the way I felt. I, and somebody told me, well, it was my, my instructor when I was going to school for being, to my EMT uh, class. Hey, Phyllis. Um, told me one time, he says, look, he says, uh, because we were having a conversation on, you know, how to deal with death and because you're going to see it. You're going to yeah. see it. Yeah. He says, what you've got to understand is at the end of the day, you're not in control. True. He said, uh, you can go, you can pull up on scene. You can do everything right. And you're still going to lose that patient. Mm -hmm. yeah. You can pull up on the scene and do everything wrong, and you and and that patient will pull through. Yes, he says. But at the end of the day, you're not in control. You're just helping. Yep. <laughs> the man upstairs has the say. Oh, you know, yes. and that that right there helped me get through so much that I saw and dealt with, mm -hmm. and. Because it's, I, 
I guess some people that are not believers could look at it as like you're deflecting or, you know, you're not taking accountability or that type of thing. But I don't see it that way. You know, um, we're just little cogs in a big machine. And, you know, we don't we don't control the on and off button, <laughs> you know, Mm-mm-mm. but. uh And I'll say this, um, things that you see make you question your faith if you're a Christian, you know, because you ask yourself time and time again, why did this happen to this person, you know, Mm -hmm. and you really have to rock back on your faith and remember that it's in his hands and you don't know. You cannot see the big picture. So that that's what that's what got me through a lot of what I dealt with. You know, the the and the the suicides are are probably the hardest. Was suicides? I had a problem for a while, up until the last several years. I had a problem with suicides because I felt like it and I still feel like this to a certain extent but not as hardcore as I used to because I felt like it was the most selfish decision you could possibly make but and I had I had quite a few friends that I've lost to that in the past and I was mad at them Mm-hmm. You know, and but th- that mindset has changed. Thankfully, you know, you can't you can't have anger in your heart for people. You know, it, it's just, you know. But have you ever been in the sin? I mean, when you brought somebody back, have they ever told you I saw this or I know this now? No. Or I feel more comfortable now or anything like that or. You know, I know we talked about it last time. You never had anybody go, yeah, um, I didn't see nothing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, you know, Tex, if she's working in the ER, you know, she's just going to deal with the, you know, the emergency at hand and then they're they're going to take the right. patient somewhere else. So I'm, I'm pretty sure she probably would have if they would have stayed with her. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, there's there's been a few times where I've had uh, someone who's, I guess, I mean, pretty much they've passed away, come mm-hmm. back, or we get them back, and they've started to wake up. And I've had a couple that said a few words, but usually in that situation, if we get them back, they're intubated, so they're on a ventilator because we a lot of times don't know why they went down. Mm-hmm. Um, so they right. really don't have the opportunity to talk. And there's been some that I've gotten back that I've seen in the emergency room again, and I've wanted to ask them, but But I'm just like, that's probably not appropriate. I was going to say, but you can't. I I can't be like, you remember that time you died on me? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, remember the time you died? (laughs) You know, you died. You know, no no heartbeat, died. (laughs) Yeah. What was that like? (laughs) Yeah, I've wondered that. Mm-hmm. And and I'll tell you this: most of the time, my experience, most people that's had a near death experience or been brought back or whatever, they they either go one way or the other. They either love to talk about it and they develop a sense of humor about it, or they never want it mentioned again. Uh-huh. That that's I've never really seen anything in between, you know. Uh-huh. Kind of, kind of but, like those that see Bigfoot. You either never want to talk right. about your experience, or you can't stop talking about it. Yeah, Something and I and I think happen. it's yeah, and I think it's I think it's like that pretty much with any traumatic event in somebody's mm-hmm. life. Yeah, you I know. Agree. Yeah, yeah. I I will tell you one but, cool thing. You, I have. Yeah, tell me. I want to know. I want to know something good. <laughs> yeah, this is this is because it, it gets a little sad, but this is positive. 
um, my first week working at this hospital I'm at currently, um, she went down and they were coding her on scene at the house. You know, she didn't have a heartbeat. She wasn't breathing on her own. They brought her into the emergency room. We, we were still working on her, still trying to get that heartbeat back, still trying to get her breathing. We worked on her for probably a good hour. Now, if they've been down on scene for about an hour, we work them an hour. The chance of getting someone back and for them to have all brain activity mm -hmm. intact, uh -huh. I mean, it's, it's basically zero. Uh -huh. I mean, Correct. You, you don't get a lot of people back like that. And this lady, she was middle-aged, but we worked her. We knew the family. We were waiting on family to get there. And they got there just because they wanted to see, and I can't blame them. They wanted to make sure everything was be done, being done for their family member. I'd be the same way. I'd be like, did you do X, Y, and Z? You know. Uh -huh. um, so we still, we were working on working on nothing. We were getting nothing. It was just a systole, flat line, no heart activity. She wasn't trying to breathe, nothing. So the doctor is like, you know, we does anyone have any ideas before we actually call a time of death? He'll be like, does anyone have any ideas, any ideas what we can do? And we were like, we've done everything. We've emptied two code cards. You know, we've every medicine we've thrown at her, you know. So he said, OK. And we were like, you know, then the sadness sets in the. You know, we lost one. So we started taking everything off of them, of course, with. I don't know if you guys know this, but um, we have to make sure they don't need to go for autopsy. So we have to contact the coroner. So we leave all monitoring like uh, ET tubes, IV catheters. So we leave everything in until we know they're not going for autopsy. But we started pulling off, you know, cardiac monitors, everything. They're like covering her up, you know, getting her situated so the family can come in. Well, you turn around. I turn around and I'm actually at her head. And I turn around to get something. I can't remember. And you hear something go. And I look. We all look. And sometimes after a patient passes, they will expel air. Mm -hmm. or right. they may be, you may have a flutter of a heart wave or something. Just some right. leftover electrical activity. But we heard a breath. We're like, okay. We just stopped, you know, dead silence in that room. And then it was like five seconds later, we were about to, you know, turn back. And then you hear. And we were looking, we saw the sheet, we saw the movement of the sheet rise. We we're like, what? So we're throwing back on a heart monitor and feeling for a pulse. And we hear another breath and she's got a pulse, y'all. She mm. comes back. She's doing well to this day. But we had given up. That's just what you're saying. You know, you you don't have any control over if someone's going to live, they're going to live. No matter if someone's going to no live. What. Yeah, no matter what you do. But we have And she starts breathing. She gets a heartbeat. She starts moving her eyes. I mean, it was it was a miracle. That was a miracle. And she's still wow. doing that to this day. So I'm wondering if it took like just a long time for that medicine to start reacting. I don't see how because I mean it the medicine goes in. It, it should be instantaneous. Yeah, yeah, I know. And the half-life is really short. So, like um, you know, you can give a ton of epinephrine and you will might get that heartbeat back, but once you stop giving it you'll lose that heartbeat. You'll lose that activity. But this was after, I mean, everything should have been like, the epinal should have been out of her system. But that's when she was like, nope, not done yet. Mm -hmm. So that, that was a miracle. So something good to share. That, that, was, that definitely was a miracle. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. A lot yeah, of people no think that, that when you're in the emergency room and, and uh you know you're working on a patient uh they think that like 15 minutes and you're done they don't realize that this goes on and on and on and that you keep continuing 
you know, and, you know, and being in a small town, if you know the family, it's going to keep going until you're exhausted. So you keep, right. there's nothing else. Right. So, yeah, I mean, it's not just 15 minutes, y'all, that people get worked on and then they're like, oh, well, they're gone. So we're right. done. No. That's not how it works. That's yeah. not how it works at all. Yep. Yep. We try. <laughs> I know That's right. we, we had what was called the golden hour. And our goal was to, from the time we showed, from the time we showed up on scene to get them to the ER, you know, that was, Mm -hmm. that was the, you know, the golden hour, because that was, um, if you're any later than that, eh, usually don't work out so well. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah. Um, I watched the, this is funny, Corey. Um, I knew a guy that woke up in the morgue with his toe tagged. What? You know, I was watching a movie the other day, and obviously that was before the the. Uh, <laughs> this guy woke up before the, uh, <laughs> and they examined him. Um, but. Uh, I was watching a movie the other day and I can't remember the freaking name of it, but it was about a, a, a more, a more, a family operated morgue. Um, and the old guy, he was old school and he would tie bells on the end of the, the corpse, the tags that on the toe, on their toes uh-huh. before he, you know, if they, if they were just in the putting in the box and they were waiting on the autopsy and so if they woke up, the bell would jingle because oh, that's what they used God. to do. Everything back in, what they used to do that was part of the whole "Saved by the Bell" thing, you know. Uh-huh. What they they had to, because they would used to they would run bells with on a string into the into the uh, coffins when they buried people. Yeah, because yep. I mean it happened more than once back in the day that you know they'd exhume a, a grave and there would be scratch marks on the. <laughs> On the coffin from the You're inside. Right. Yes, there is so a um, by the bell. Gosh, there is an illness to where you're to where it, you know you you think they're dead, but they're actually not dead. Um, mm. it's not vampire. It's uh, not Dracula. Gosh, now that it's I like I'm, uh, there's a there's an illness, and it is it, well, it explains why people were buried alive and I can't remember the name of it but um yeah it, it does oh. happen and it, it, I mean you, you see some weird stuff you know as far as the you know like with accident traumas you know um you, you see things that you know people walk away from stuff that they shouldn't have walked away from. There's no way, you know, yeah. that, you know, when you, when you, extric- when you uh, extricate somebody out of a car that is, you know, how, how did, and they come out without scratch, you know, and then you've got other people that don't even have any marks on them or anything in their, in, in their DOA, right. you know, the worst, the worst wreck that I ever worked was I had, I had three DOAs or, you know, DOS and they really didn't have any, it was all blunt force trauma. They didn't have any marks on them. And what a lot of people, some, 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 um, medical, um, directors will, they, they, they're the ones that put forth the, uh, the directives and everything on, on, on these, um, first responders. Well, ours were we did not work blunt force trauma to the chest in an arrest. We didn't do it. But penetrating trauma, we did. The guy, the person could have a two-foot pipe straight through their chest, but we'd still be working them. Wow. But if they, um, like, for one example, there was a guy that was, um, he was a truck driver that, thank you so much, Pixie. That's incredible. Thank you, Pixie. Um. And Liberty too. Yeah, she just became a member. Yeah, Liberty. That that was awesome. Um, Paranormal. uh, 
just a member for six months and then she just gifted five more memberships and, and Liberty, I'm sorry, we, we missed you. I put it up there and I, I didn't, but I didn't want to interrupt anybody. Um, thank you so much for the donation. Um, but the thing about it is the, the this, this truck driver backed up to, um, a warehouse was opening the opening his doors. They were swing open doors to his trailer and the wind caught one and hit him in the chest and he, and he died like that. I mean, stopped his chest, stopped his heart. By directives, we couldn't work it. Wow. And I'm like, and that, that never quite, it, I struggled with that because it didn't make a lot of sense to me. But wow. the way I had to explain to me is if it, if it, if you get hit in the chest hard enough to stop your heart, you basically exploded your heart. Mm. I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm not, you know, I've never opened anybody up to look. <laughs> Mm-mm. But yeah, blunt force trauma in the chest didn't work. Really strange. Yeah, that that would be hard. That would be hard not to go full on hands on. Yeah, yeah, that's tough. Yeah. That is tough. And a lot of people don't realize how exhausting chest compressions are. Mm-hmm. <laughs> It, you it, want to you want to pull work out? Do chest compressions for a few minutes. <laughs> yeah, it, it doesn't look anything like what you see on TV. People are like, uh-uh. ooh, ooh, no, mm-hmm. no, you're compressing that chest about two inches. I mean, it's yeah. you know, I was told if you don't break a rib, you're not doing it right. <laughs> yeah. Pretty much, yeah. Mm. Mm. Crazy. Wow. That's just crazy. I, I I sit there and I think about that. You know, I uh, watched a video, a crazy video, and this guy's driving down this beach and he's he's in the water. He's in an SUV and he's acting like an idiot driving. That's plain to see. And then he starts going into the sand and then into the ocean. Then he started swerving. And then the next thing you know, he swerved so hard that he rolled the truck like three or four times. And when he rolled it, you see him fly out of the vehicle, fly out of the vehicle, hit the water. He jumps up out of the water and then limps out onto the beach. Wow. Hell. I don't know. I said, are you lucky? Yeah, must be. Because I don't, I don't. That would probably be a, uh, you know, a near death experience, wouldn't you think? I would think. Now here's one for you. There was a uh, a guy that was driving his 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 uh it was a um he was digging he was digging post holes he was in a big tractor right. Mm-hmm. Now, I don't know why, I don't know how, so don't get me to that, trying to explain this. But anyway, his four-year-old son had made it out there. And he backed over his four-year-old son mm. in his tractor. And his four-year-old son, after he figured out what had happened, he jumped off and his, his four-year-old son, I mean, the full, I mean, head to toe, the whole thing, ran right over him. Four-year-old son got up, dusted off, not a scratch. Wow. That is, that's protection from up above, right there. Now, I will say this. He was pressed into the mud, Mm -hmm. but still, Mm -hmm. you know. But, yeah, it's stuff like that, you know. Yeah. The, um, that you hear, it's just, it's, you know. Mm-hmm. It's amazing. Yeah, miracles happen every day. We just we mm-hmm. don't see them. We don't hear about them, but they do. I mean, it's I mean, it's a miracle. I haven't gotten eaten by Bigfoot yet, or stepped into a portal and taken who knows where. I mean, I guess every time really you leave your house, if you make it back home, you should be thankful because you you never know what's going to happen. You yeah. 
Yeah. Yep. I don't. I was trying to think of something somebody said once, and they said that most accidents happen in the home, and I forgot what percentage it was. Hmm. Oh my goodness, and I can't remember what it was. And I was trying to think of that, and in what it reminded me of something I'd seen in a movie or something where the coffee pot it started leaking, and then they went to go grab the coffee pot and got electrocuted, and. Well, that's um, that's Sounds like a. Um, is, it maybe, um, is it final destination? Final destination. Yes. <laughs> or so, it was something. It was something like that. It, anyway, but you know, and I, I was just sitting there thinking about all these accidents that happen at home as well. You know, um, and and I've heard some crazy ones like they've dropped the, the hair dryer in the sink full of water and i'm like first of all why would you have a sink full of water with a hair dryer i don't know you know and just things like that i mean the accidents happen at home it, it just as much really to me i i'm more i'm more uh apt to get hurt at home than i am out <laughs> well part of that is well a lot of that is that and I, i've been safety coordinator on several in several companies yeah. Um, most of that is because people ignore the one-on-ones of safety at home. When they're at home. Yeah. How many times you see people jump up on a chair instead of using a ladder, or right. get on a ladder, get on a ladder, stand on the top rung, or reach over way over? Okay, see, we're all guilty of it. Oh, you I know? am so guilty. Yes, you know. You know. So that brings me to washing my dog. Uh oh. Okay, so I have two wiener dogs, and we've talked about this before. And I have a garden tub, so it's down in there. Well, there's a little step up, and then you get into the garden tub. Well, I'm leaning over the garden tub, sitting on that step. Well, one of my little dogs decided he was going to be an a hole. I'm just going to say an a hole. And he kept moving around, moving around. Well, I reached over to grab him and pull him. Matt back and when I reached over I heard a snap and I lost my breath immediately and fell off fell off the tub what? <laughs> and I couldn't breathe nothing I, I was just like stuck there I, I just I couldn't do anything and I'm thinking okay my dog's gonna drown and I'm gonna die and nobody's gonna know, <laughs> oh, <how laughs> you know? Horrible. yeah and, and so um the very next day I went to the the doctors because I know there's not much you can do about a broken rib I went to the doctors, you know, it took them like five hours to call me back. I went to work. I'm having a hard time breathing. They're like, oh, yeah, you broke your rib. <laughs> I was like, nice. And see, that's what I'm talking about. If I'm if I'm going to get hurt, I'm going to get hurt at home. That's just what happens to me. I had a friend okay. of mine. I had a friend of mine slip. He was stepping in to take a shower and he slipped and, and fell on the edge of the bathtub and broke, broke several of his ribs. And uh, when he went in. Um, to get it taken to get it looked at and everything, they found cancer. Wow! Whoa. Wow! Yep. You know, I kind of think that's like an intervention, like it, it, almost. It's kind of like we're gonna get. To, you're not gonna go to the doctors yourself, so we're gonna have to do something to you to make you go. Yep. Yes. Kind of like, like that angel on your shoulder going, "Well, okay, I'll fix you." you yeah. Know, we're not gonna listen. Okay. If you're not going to pay attention. I'll slap you in the head so you do. Yeah. 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 And 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 that's what I mean. I mean, the, being home is is really not any better. Text because you're right. We get home, we think we're safe, so we just kind of ignore all this stuff. You know. Mm -hmm. You do. I will pull over a chair instead of getting a proper step stool. You How know? many people see mowing the yard and flip flops? Yeah. I've done it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely have done it. I wear my work boots. <laughs> um, it, it, I won't do it anymore. Uh, <laughs> I'm accident prone. I can't. Mm -mm, nope. The, I've, I've been pretty okay. lucky, but I do some dumb things around the house now that you bring that up. Yeah. Like I'll be cleaning the My window. mom was mowing the yard when she was um, younger. It's before I was born. But 
um, she ran over a coat hanger and it drove it completely through her foot. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. What were you saying, Kristen? I'm sorry. Oh, I was just saying, I mean, I'm right there with you. I've done some dumb things. I mean, pulling over a chair to wash a window. I mean, if I were to fall, I could go through the window. We all know how sharp glass is. Hit an artery. I'm gone. Yeah, but mm -hmm. see, we won't, we won't, we won't take the extra step and go out to the garage and get, right. you know, a step stool. <laughs> there was a guy that was that. He's got a YouTube channel. Y'all can look it up. Um, but he was shooting a fifty caliber and it blew up in his face. And no, thank you. It. It, cut his, it, it nicked his juggler and he's got t-shirts for this now he lived but he stuck his thumb in it and made it to the hospital and they were able to save, they were able to save him and it did a whole lot more damage I mean he broke his arm and I mean, boogered him up and everything but um, he's got shirts you can get now so stick a thumb in it <laughs> <laughs> But wow. he's got the video of it blowing up in his face on his channel. It's really an amazing video. How, you know, I mean, he could have very easily died. Uh, one of the stories, I, I wasn't there yet again. I wasn't there to witness it. But um, medics responded to the scene uh, call. It was a father and son that was cutting wood at the house. At the house, right? Um, dad had a Dad had a chainsaw. Son was out there helping too. They were like clearing some land and the chainsaw kicked back. And when it did, it kicked back and got his neck. And he looked at his son and said, I just killed myself and dropped. And he was dead. And wow. You never know. But oh, I can't imagine it's it, being the son, seeing the chainsaw kick back and, get your throat and the dad, I mean, he knew, he knew, he said, I, I just killed myself and dropped. Oh, wow. Yeah. I had an accident with a, we were talking about being safe and everything. And when I was probably 20, I had an accident with a, a chainsaw. We were, as me and a buddy, we were trying to, we had lightning, uh, hit a pecan tree we we're trying to um saw it up you know and everything and we we're trying to finish up so we could go out and you know cruise for girls and that type of thing <laughs> and uh we were sawing by headlight uh -huh. and i was yeah and i was cutting i was cutting a limb that was up you know it was laying on the ground but it was sticking up and i was sawing it in sections and I was I had the chainsaw in one hand and I was holding the limb with the other and the chainsaw kicked back on me and, and hit me in the hand. Well, I didn't think nothing of it. I just shook it off and kept going. I was walking up to the <laughs> I was walking up to the truck and he was in the truck and the headlights are shining on me. He goes, What in the hell did you do? I looked down and I am covered in blood. No. I thought it was just sweat. And I had, and I still got the scar. I had hit my, it, I was wearing leather gloves, but it went through my glove and hit and cut the, my palm right here next to my thumb, uh -huh. that, that pad. Okay. And I bled, I bled like a stuck pig. I didn't hit anything major. It just bled a lot, but yeah, I still got scar. <laughs> oh, but uh, I mean, it very well could have went very, very bad, mm -hmm. very bad. In a split second, split second. I know um, Final Destination brings back some memories for me. I ended up buying a pontoon, brand new Bentley pontoon. I was taking it home. I was so happy. And there was a log truck in front of me carrying a full, log, full load of logs. And he was coming up a hill and around a curve. Well, a concrete truck was coming towards him and the concrete truck crossed over into his lane. They kind of hit the side head on, but it was more on the sides. 
the log truck overturned right in front of me and all I saw were logs flying past me. Oh my gosh. I'm talking, it was in a matter of two seconds this happened. And I'm like, oh my gosh, when it, when I finally got to a stop, I realized, I mean, it was like, am I alive? You know, I'm sitting here looking, it's like, okay, no logs are in the windshield, but the pontoon was beat to pieces. The Escalade was dented and uh, just all kinds of issues. But that was a final wow. destination moment for me. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy. Wow. Mm. You know, I, my I, wife, my well, wife does not like for me when when we're driving down the highway and I go I like go by a, a semi. Mm-hmm. Um She's like, you got to hurry up and pass this guy. It makes her nervous because of the blowouts. Because <clears throat> a blowout, a blowout from the semi truck can kill you. True. You know. Yep. Uh huh. Yep. I, every time I see a log truck now, I mean, I will do whatever it takes to get past that log truck because it's almost like, oh no. You know. I remember <clears throat> what happened last time I was behind one. Donnie Cho says he had an accident with chainsaw once. He peed himself on cutting wood. He thinks it was a vibration. <laughs> Donnie. <laughs> Why do I believe that? I know, right? I see that happening. <laughs> I had some uh, a buddy of mine in high school, two, two of them. They had um, just got uh, one of their – one of them just got, they've been working on a dirt bike and they got it running. They came over to my place, which is about a six, eight mile drive for them on a dirt bike on the highway. But, um, yeah, I know, but they came to my place and I said, well, all right, you know, and I said, I finished up what I was doing. I said, well, I'll, I'll meet y'all back at your place. So they took off two of them on the, on dirt bike, you know, and there was an S curve about a mile from my house. And I, and I left after they did, and I come around that S curve, and they had ran off the road. Uh-oh. And one of them was the the guy that was ro- driving. Um, they went off the road and they hit a barbed wire fence. And he was sitting down <laughs> on his butt, but he looked like he'd been crucified, tied up in that barbed wire fence like this. And. The other guy just got thrown off, busted up his ankle. But the the barbed wire was wrapped around both arms, his neck, and yeah, he he was. I think they. I think we were like fifteen at the time, and I'm surprised he survived. It, 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 they said it took nine people to hold him down enough where they could cut him out of the fence, and they had to cut the fence. <clears throat> the fence was so embedded in him, they had to cut the fence and take him and, and part of the fence to the ER so they could get it out, you know, because it was so close and, went, and it was real close to his juggler. And, of course, you got, you know, your brachials in your, you know, in your arm. So, but, yeah, he carried, he carried those, as far as I know, he's still alive. I don't know. But uh, he carried those scars for, uh, you know, as long as I'd known him. So, but... Mm. It makes me hurt. <clears throat> yeah. Tangled up in barbed wire before. Oh, I can't imagine being tangled up to the degree he was. Oh, I had I had a some friends. I was I was coming home one night. We'd been cruising around Maine and everything, and I was coming home. And the way out to my house was a two lane blacktop road, and it was dark, you know. And this truck whizzed by me and then water balloons hit my windshield so off i went you know here i am chasing them they went down this dirt road and then it got real dusty and i had to back off and then next thing i know i see tail lights over in a field he had run off the road and flipped through a barbed wire fence and rolled his truck out in this field so i pulled over come come to find out it was three friends of mine they were just messing with me but it was uh, a buddy of mine that i went to school with and then two girls that were like little sisters to me and um, they both had one of them had really long curly brown hair and she had barbed wire wrapped all in her hair and I had to get that out 
pulled him out. He was unconscious. I throwed him over my shoulder, throw all of them in the truck, took him back to his house. You know, here I am knocking on the door with her, you know, this woman's son over my shoulder, unconscious, you know. <laughs> but <clears throat> have you have you handled have you handled any snake bites? I mean, you're in the south, so mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah, I've handled it's mainly y'all been copperhead bites. Um, mm-hmm. you, know, you you get a couple here and there that the person doesn't know what kind of snake got them. Which is and, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. most of them are copperhead bites and <clears throat> pretty much so decent outcomes. Uh, I mean, considering. Well, really, I mean, a copperhead will, unless you have an, emer- an allergic reaction to them, and and you get if you get to the ER, I mean, you know, pretty quick. You're going to be okay because a copperhead is not as venomous as, and it's a different kind of poison than, mm-hmm. say, a rattlesnake or a, co- or a cottonmouth. You know, yeah. my mom got bit by a cottonmouth, and it was it was yeah. really weird because it was a baby one. And the thing about a lot of people used to say, well, baby snakes are so much more venomous. No, they're not. They just don't have the control than an, a, a mature snake does to dry bite. Most of your snakes will dry bite you first. Yes. You know. Mm-hmm. Um, but a, a younger snake doesn't have that control and they, and they give you everything they've got. <clears throat> and so that's what makes them so much more dangerous. But my mom, we were out fishing at a lake and she walked around the car on the other side of the car to go take a squat. And she was wearing flip flops and she kicked this snake, this little, this juvenile, real little bitty cotton mouth. And he bit her between the toes. Oh. You know how you when your foot goes forward, your toes kind of spread out? Oh, yeah. You know? It bit her, but it hit her between the toes. One fang went in one toe, one fang went in the other. And when uh, we got out of the hospital and everything, the, she had an allergic reaction to the anti-venom. And that almost killed her. But she made it. But yeah, it, it's <clears throat> that's scary. Yeah, it, it's I, I, I gotta I gotta tell you a funny story. Okay. So anyway, I'm in I'm in my room and my mother is out in the kitchen. Next thing you know, I hear her screaming for me. And it's one of those screams you just don't want to hear, you know what I mean? So I go out there and I'm looking at her like, okay, tell me what? What's going on? And she she's pointing down at her foot, and I looked down, and she came in and saw a snake slithering across the floor, and she stepped on its head. And she goes, I can't move, I can't move. And it's wrapping around her foot, you know. So I'm looking around the kitchen, and I'm like, what am I going to kill this thing with? What am I going to kill this? Because the way she had it was in the arch of her foot, so Mm -hmm. it could it could get loose very easy. So I'm not going to reach, you know, reach down there and grab it because the way she was stepping on it, I couldn't grab it. So I'm like, well, okay. So I'm looking around, looking around. I'm going to grab a knife, you know, and I think, well, I'm going to cut this thing in two. This is what we're going to do. So she's like, wait, wait, wait. There's there there. There's a shovel right outside the, the side door. Go get that. So I went and got the shovel on the side of the, the house and I went and I, and I just like saw it in half so I didn't saw my floor. <laughs> no. Oh, no. Well, I'll tell you, we, when, when I was living there. Too- like, that just happened like last last summer. So oh, wow. it hasn't been that long. And, you know, my, my poor mom. Well, you know, we, we, uh, I, I, living out there when I, where I grew up, I mean, we, we would find snakes in the toilets. We would find snakes in the dryer, yeah. you know, I mean, all kinds of stuff. Yep. And, but <laughs> I was cleaning out a buddy of mine's, a buddy of mine called me. I, I was, I was going through scuba school and all that kind of stuff. And, and he called me, he says, Hey, he says, I got some bob wire that's busted in over a cow pond and, and it's down. It's, I get kidded that it's in the bottom. And the cow pond was only about 10 feet deep, you know? Mm-hmm. So I got my, Oh, thank you, sweet pea. Thank you. Um, sweet pea. So I just, you know, snorkel mass bins, that type of thing. But it was so muddy, like most cow ponds, you couldn't see this far, you know? 
I mean, you really couldn't. You couldn't see your hand in front of your face. So I was going down there blind, and I was, I'd go down there, and I'd bring a handful of uh, wire, and I'd pull it up and give it to him. And and we had, we knew there were snakes in this pond, you know. Right. And <laughs> so I go down, and I grab, a, I, I, I grab a handful, and the next thing I know, I see nothing but cotton right off my mask. And I went this way, and he went that way. I just about pulled a Jesus and walked on the water getting out of that pond. And <laughs> when I got out, it surfaced, and he shot it, and it was a six and a half foot water musket. And it was it was bigger than my forearm. If he'd have been an inch over, he'd have got me. But he hit me square on the mask. And uh, I know one time I was living down on the Brazos River with a buddy of mine, and we ran trot lines. We had our own business. We called it a welding business. We did anything. We built fence, scrub, whatever, you know. And the same person I lived with when I had the chainsaw incident, by the way. So, <laughs> um, but uh, we we had, we had were running trot lines, and we'd run them. We'd get up in the morning, run and bait them, come home at lunch, run and bait them, and then before we went to bed, we'd run and bait them, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, the river was so shallow that we walked our trot lines, and we just pulled the boat with a little 10-foot john boat with us, and that's where we put the fish. So... <laughs> I was in front, and I, you know how you pull on the trot line, you see if anything's wiggling and everything, and then something was wiggling. I said, okay, we got something. And I scooted down a little bit further, and all of a sudden, <laughs> ran my arm. So I pulled back, and it was water musket had swallowed the hook, right? <laughs> really? But down the, he, he wrapped around my forearm. Well, I just, I whipped out my, I, I carried my dive knife on me all the time. And I just reached down and it and whopped his head off. But yeah, <laughs> yeah I've got I, I've got my share of snake stories. That's for sure. Yeah. Now I like snakes. I'll go and catch them. And my dad and I, we used to go snake hunting. Mm-hmm. So I I love snakes. I don't I don't mind them one bit. If somebody gets a snake in their house or finds a snake in their yard, they're calling me. Come get the snake. And it would, <laughs> um. Now, I'm not too fond of them when I'm out there walking or sit down and then you discover, you know, they're, they're hanging they're out. They're there, yeah. 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 But, yeah, I mean, I, I love them. They're misunderstood. And, I mean, they just bite as a defense mechanism. I yeah. mean, somebody, yeah. if a giant were to step on me, I'd probably try to bite too, so. Exactly. You know, there's a story That's that funny. comes out of, um, it's either Lake Whitney or Lake Granbury. I can't remember which one it is. But there was a gal, and she was water skiing. Oh, no. And, you know, um, if you've ever seen um, Lonesome Dove and that, that water mosque where, where they, they stirred up and, and they fall into a bunch of them, that kid falls uh-huh. into them, that's true. They, they, they get what in what they call balls, and, and they'll, they'll, there'll be hundreds of snakes in this thing, and they'll just bob up and down, you know. And, um, but, uh, this old gal was water skiing and she saw this snake ball and it scared her and she fell and she fell right in the middle of it. Well, oh. By the time they circled around and got her, she looked like a freaking pincushion. She was dead already. Mm. But, and then there's another story that comes out of one of them lakes. I can't remember where it may be possum kingdom that, um, there was, a uh, another old gal that was water skiing and she fell and nobody could figure out why she could, why she fell and when they circled around her they saw her and she's wearing a life jacket now and they saw her bob down go under and then pop back up screaming and when they pulled her on board she was missing one leg from the knee down oh. and, they, and they and they said that was a uh um alligator gar, big old alligator gar that got her no i've seen alligator gars roll up next to the boat as long as the boat and big around his telephone pole on the Brazos <laughs> river uh, we've we've got some big big gar here in the lake, Lake Russell. Uh, I've seen them. I mean, you can see them surfacing out on the lake. You can't help but see them. But uh, that's the first time I've ever heard of one getting a leg. Ooh. Yeah. I, now I don't know how true it is, but I, I you know, I I can under. I, it's probably more of a crocodile Dundee thing, you know. That he was talking about, oh, the crocodile bit his leg off and everything, and he just bit him. 
<laughs> you know, so it may be one of those type stories, but um, um yeah, it, it's well, we've there, got there, uh, we've got crazy. Asian carp in the Mississippi that'll slam hit you right out of the boat. Oh yeah, <laughs> they'll oh, come yeah. up, slap you, and knock you right out of the boat. Um, I you know I've told the story before, but. Uh, we will we will take baseball bats, tennis rackets, catcher's mitts, all kinds of stuff. And it becomes a game, you know, mm -hmm. because they've gotten so bad in the Mississippi River that anytime you get that, you know, your boat going in the Mississippi, I mean, they're just flat. And I mean, you have to watch because, first of all, they stink bad. Second of all, they're yeah. super, super slimy. So you do not ever want to touch one, get hit by one, you know just ever so we'll get out there and we'll play baseball and or tennis or uh just whatever racket racket ball rackets usually work better than tennis rackets they don't last very long so we use the racket ball rackets them work pretty good <laughs> but baseball bats are is actually my preferred weapon <laughs> what kind of fish is this it's called an asian carp it's the kind that Whenever you get a vibration going in the water near them, they start they flipping out of them. the water. They just start oh. going crazy in the water. And they're they're not small fish. No. You know, they're not small. They they get rather large. And like I said, if they hit you and you may be standing up, they're gonna knock you right out of the right right in the water. Wow. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Andrew. He says people on jet skis got to be careful of tree stumps. Last thing you want to do is land on a water monster nest. That is true. Absolutely, absolutely. That is true. Mm -hmm. You know, and and I think and so, who was it? Pops, I think asked me. Um, oh no, it was uh, Mister Knack. Um, Tex, have you ever seen a rattlesnake floating on the water and think it's a stump? A rattlesnake floating on the water? And think it's a stump? No. I've seen I've seen rattlesnakes in the water for sure. All, all snakes can swim. I don't care what people say. And another thing, if anybody ever tells you that a water moskin can't bite underwater or he'll drown, they do not know what they're talking about, folks, because that is not the truth. They can bite underwater. Um, and I got that that rumor decimated one time when i was out fishing and this this uh <laughs> water moss can come up with a catfish in his mouth <laughs> still flopping <laughs> right yeah. right so so Kristen, tell me if you can one of the weirdest type of home accidents that came in that you just couldn't believe happened do you do you have one of those stories Yes, I do. And this is another um, incident that forever lives in my mind. <laughs> I, I, uh, we we get a call from EMS saying that they're bringing in a DOA. And um, okay, you know, sometimes they will bring them into the ER just to kind of hold them for the morgue or hold them for the funeral home just to get them out of the field and somewhere. So they call them, they're saying they're bringing in a DOA, which is dead on arrival. So a body, that's all mm -hmm. we need. So the two medics come rolling in with the body bag on a stretcher, but the body bag is not flat. Like one part is sticking up, one part's to the side. And we're like, what is this? So us being the nosy ER nurses, we, we follow right behind them. What's the story? You know, what is one is family coming up here Two, do they know you? Cause you gotta be prepared who family's going to walk in there. You gotta know who this is and what has happened. So, but we also a little nosy too. Right. So um, the guys, they were like, well, this, this man was uh, bush hogging on this field Somehow he had gotten off to open up a gate or close the gate and the bush hog was in motion or got knocked out of gear. I don't know. I don't drive a bush hog, so I don't know how they work, but the bush hog started up and everything was turning. Somehow he got trapped and the bush hog chopped him up. 
So when they brought him in, his torso was intact, but he was decapitated, missing a couple or missing an arm, missing a leg. Nothing was where it should be. I mean, it was a mangled body. So we unzip and he said, well, first of all, we need to make sure this guy, we've got everything because I guess they had been out in the field picking up pieces of him, put in, mm -hmm. him in the bag. And um, anyway, we, we come to find out he's missing a piece of him. I mean, we, we, we can't find part of his leg. So, I mean, that was just gone. And it was, I mean, this is middle of the night. So family never showed up. Um, I'm sure they were all in shock. But mm -hmm. they come, they took the body, funeral home, come and got the body. And the medics come back in on their next shift, which would have been two nights later. And they started talking. They said, you know, that, that guy we brought in, we we're like, yeah, how, how could we forget? Mm -hmm. said, we remember him. He said, well, the next day the family was gathered at the house and the dog brought up the leg and dropped it on the front porch. No. Yeah. I can't say that I'm surprised. I know. I'm not either. I mean, all it could smell was its owner. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yes. Yes. But can you imagine you're, if you're gathered at the house mm -hmm. and you walk out on the front porch and there's your uncle, cousin's leg laying there? Missing part. Yes. The missing no. Part. Yeah. Yeah. That one, that one I will never forget. How could you? I know. I know. I tell you what, farming accidents are, are, are generally very bad. Yeah. Um, there was another guy that was um, drilling drilling post holes with, with a stinger on the back of his on his tra on his tractor, and a lot of times people will put a cheetah bar on the back of it on the back of it to put more weight on, put more pressure on it, you know, to go through something a little tough. Hmm. And he didn't put a cheetah on; he was pushing down on the stinger. And evidently wearing a long sleeve shirt, and it got hung up in the auger, and sucked him into the auger. And I mean, it just—if you can imagine, you know, a twelve-inch auger or whatever—and he just got all wrapped up in it. it. It broke, shattered every bone in his body. Yeah, you we had, we had something just like that happen. Around here, it was a husband and wife put, putting up fence, and somehow the auger, they had rented a large auger. The barbed wire mm. got tangled up in the auger, and the wife got tangled up in the barbed wire, and it was just, it just wrung her around. Yep. Mm. Uh -uh. Yep. We, uh, I used to work at FedEx as a conveyor mechanic. And they had an accident. We had a big safety meeting about this. They had an accident up in, uh, I believe it was Jersey. Um, maybe in Atlanta. I don't. I don't really. I don't can't remember. But anyway, these conveyor cages are open at the top. These big con and these conveyors are five, six feet wide. You know, and they don't stop until they get tripped out or somebody hits the EPO switch. The emergency's off switch. Well, this old boy, the, uh, an envelope had gotten on this package conveyor, and it was it was trapped in in the because the conveyor when it goes to the cage, it goes like this, and, you know, it's like feeding your belt around your you know your fan belt. It goes around all different kinds of pulleys, and this envelope was trapped in it, and it was just sitting there. Well, he got this guy got the bright idea to climb up on top of the cage, lean over and grab this envelope. Well, when he did, he lost his balance and he fell head first into the conveyor. And by the time they got it shut off, it had chewed him up to the waist from all the way up to his waist from the head. And as a conveyor mechanic, the firefighters really don't know how to take these things apart. We do. So the mechanics up there were the ones doing most of the extricate. But 
<laughs> you talk about the big corporate machine not stopping. Mm-hmm. It doesn't stop. You clean it up and you fire it right back up, you know. But uh, there was also, uh, I can't remember where this was either. That, this may have been Chicago. But there was a, a woman um, parking a, a turbo pop plane and she backed into the propeller. You know, so, I mean, things, industrial accidents. Now, I'll tell you a call I went on. We flew this guy. We went, they were using a, they were using another forklift to pull the batteries out of, out of another forklift. And this battery weighed a thousand pounds. Well, the tongs slipped and this cat was only wearing penny loafers, which it wouldn't have mattered. Okay. Honestly. Mm-hmm. And you could tell. By the way it happened, he had tried to get out of the way. But this battery fell on his foot long ways and just split it like this all the way up to the end step. And, of course, the battery was on one side, you know, of his foot. And he was trying to turn it out of the way, and then it fell and just mangled this side of his foot. <clears throat> and uh, we had popped him with morphine as much as we could, and he was still in pain but uh 19 years old man he'll never be the same we flew into parkland you know but see if they could rebuild it i never heard anything but Hmm. that was now from i'm gonna get a little more you talk about morbid curiosities and and sense of humor here but um (laughs) thank you smoky um that's awesome thank you so much the uh seeing something like that when you can see the workings of something internally i mean it's just it's fascinating you know and i I know there's a lot of you out there won't understand that but you know when you see these you know like somebody cuts their hand open or cuts their knee open or something you can see the workings in it and everything it's something that you study. It's something that you look at is, you know, because it's not something you can see every day, you know, unless you're a surgeon and we're not surgeons. Right. You know, but I know it's, it's morbid, but it was cool. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. We had a guy, we, I went on one call. I was on, I was, I was, um, I was a volunteer firefighter and I was also, uh, EMT, but, we went on a call one time. All we knew was it was an airplane hangar and it was on fire. Okay. It's like 430 in the morning, something like that. And we responded. And when we rolled up, this airplane hangar was red, glowing, and breathing. Wow. The, come to find out, the doors were chained from the inside. We knew we had propane tanks inside. Because the guy wasn't using it for an air, air, airplane hangar. It was a private airport. He was renting it and restoring cars. So we had, you know, oxycetylene and, and propane in there. And so we had to cut access to the doors, and we cut access on both sides, and we started, you know, hosing it down. And we got the fire knocked down, and I'm standing there with my team, and I'm on the nozzle, and I hear a thud, a kind of a squishy thud at my feet. And I looked down and there's they, they had washed nearly a fully intact brain underneath the door. No way. And yeah. So I got I got on the radio and I said, uh, we got a victim inside, <laughs> you know. So when we got we got everything knocked down when we could go in, we got in there and we found him like ten feet from the door. Um it was the first I won't call it what we call it in the field, but extreme burn victim that I've, that I've, that I'd had. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, he was in the prey and manage position, the whole nine yards. And, uh, but what had happened was, <laughs> I, I, it's not funny. Okay. It's just, but what happened was this guy's girlfriend had broke up with him and he had chained the doors from the inside, started to fire. And then, Swallowed the barrel over 357. Oh. And evidently, the because there was a hole about this big around on in the top of his head. 
and the brain was almost fully intact. We don't know how that happened. We, we, you know, we threw theories back and forth how his brain was fully intact and everything. It was weird and had come out of his skull. You know, we didn't know if the pressure did it or the gunshot wound did it or a combination thereof or whatever. But um, anyway, there's news trucks all over the place. Now, this is right after um, 9-11, and um, at the time, Bush had Putin visiting down on his ranch, and the AP got a hold of it, and the, they, all they knew, they didn't know any details. It was some little pissant little airport in backwoods, Texas over here. Okay, it's all... <laughs> But all they knew it was an airport fire. There was there was an airport. It was a fire, and there was a cat. That's all they knew, and they blew it up. The stock market in London dropped two hundred points off of that report. No way. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, a a burn victim. That's just mm, if they're alive. That that's oh gosh, I can't imagine the pain. Um, oh yeah, it's. <laughs> That's... But, uh, uh, but yeah, I'm dealing with burn patients and also in surgery and, you know, when they're cauterizing, y'all, I have to admit it's very odd, but it makes me hungry. So I cannot be around surgical patients because of the cauterization. I get hungry. I don't know what it is, but a bad burn victim, I'm like, it, my tummy just, I get hungry. I mean, that that's morbid. That's twisted. But, well, that yeah. is an odd reaction to have. I will say that, Kristen. <laughs> so everyone, when, when I get a burn patient, they're like, don't let her near you. She will eat you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> like, oh, no. Oh, no. So are they, are they, are they medium? Well done? What are they coming in? I don't know. Well done. Well done. I like yeah. it. Well done. Yeah, well done. <laughs> and I see a lot of people, and, and Kristen, you, you can settle this right here. Um, kind of, kind of a. Well, there's a reason they call it. it yes, there's. It says smells like pork. There's a reason that a lot of, a lot of the, uh, um, cannibals refer to it as long pig. Okay, I'm just saying, but. Um, The here lately, I've I've had to correct quite a few people when they're talking about sunburns and they get blisters, okay, and they call it third degree burns. These are not third degree burns. No, no. Going from a second degree burn to a third degree burn is huge. Okay, I'm just <laughs> saying, and maybe you could explain the difference. So people will understand because it, it's, you know, the degrees of burn. I mean, it is because you, you don't want if you do. Yeah. Mm, like, yeah. What I've always been taught first degree is basically a sunburn. Sec second degree is there's opening of a, of a wound. But now when you get down to a third degree, that penetrates, penetrates deep into the skin. Right. And a lot of times third degree burns, it, it gets so deep, it actually burns the nerve endings. So yep. the pain isn't so severe. But first yep. degree, yeah, it hurts a little. Second degree is so painful because it sets the nerve endings on fire versus just burning them. Right. Yeah. It's not the third degree burns that hurt them. Mm -hmm. That's not where the pain's coming from. It's the second degree burns around yeah. the third degree right. burns. Right. <clears throat> yep. But the blistering and everything, those are second degree. So, yep. but I remember the, I, I, I've had second degree sunburns one time, and that was enough for me. And we went fishing out on the Brazos one time, and I'd forgot my hat, which is, I know, stupid. Thank you. So I had a bandana, so I tied it in it like a skull cap. Uh -huh. Well, we were fishing in the river, so you're getting it from here and you're getting it bouncing up on, you know, and Gradually, they all, you know, it slipped up on my head. When we got back to the truck at the end of the day, my whole forehead was nothing but blisters. Oh, no. But, yeah. And 
I didn't know it, and I took my bandana off and I wiped my forehead. And when I did, I popped all these blisters and all this, <laughs> all this stuff ran down my face. I'm like, what in the world is going on? And I hadn't looked in the mirror or nothing, you know. So, yeah. Well, I did figure. I did figure out what sun poisoning is. I figured mm. that out. Yeah. Um, we were down in uh, Tampa at McDill Air Force Base, and we're watching the air show that they have every year and it, it, it was cloudy it was a little cool you know i had a little jacket on and you're constantly looking up into the sky and you're watching them do all these things you know well then i got home and then i was just at home for about an hour or two but the next thing you know my eyes started swelling up my face everything just expanded and that was all from the sun even through the clouds, I got that. And Good. I swear, I will never forget that. So now I I always make a habit. I'm always wearing a hat, always wearing a hat. And I guess that's where, it, you know, my fascination comes from now is because, I mean, my whole face swell up from looking up at the plains in, on a cloudy day. Mm -hmm. Isn't that crazy? And I don't know if it, you've had this happen, but... I seem to do okay, but once you get into a shower and get out of that shower, then it feels like that's when you feel, uh-oh, I got a little sunburn, is when you get out of the shower. That's when yeah. you feel it. Yeah, because, you yeah, know, our showers, we like them a little warm, and then you get out, and then you're cold or cool. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. I know. Mm -hmm. I have, I don't, I guess it's a, like an allergy to sunscreen. So everywhere I put sunscreen at, I burn. So I really, I don't, I, it makes no sense. I'm the oddest person ever. But the only place I can put sunscreen that I do not burn, that, that I won't turn red, is a little bit right on the top of my forehead and my nose. And if I put it on my shoulders, you know, chest, my back, I will burn so bad. So I don't use sunscreen except, you know, of course, they always say use sunscreen on your face. I'll help with the aging and blah, blah, blah. So I try to put it where I can tolerate it. Well, this um, this January, unfortunately, I was diagnosed with nasal cancer. Oh, wow. And so I'm starting radiation treatments next Monday. I've got to go through six weeks of radiation. Luckily, no chemo. But I'm like, are you kidding me? Of the places I put sunscreen, my nose, my forehead, is, is the place I get cancer. Really? I, I don't understand. So if someone can explain that to me, I would love to know why. But wow. Yeah. So it's it. up inside your nasal cavity? Yes. And I've got a ton of makeup now, but... Um, Without makeup, it's it's just a hole in my nose. So I have like skin glue layers and concealer layers. Uh -huh. and, every and it will, you know, bust through and bleed. And I have places on the inside. It's, it's just not pretty. But the one place that I use sunscreen is the place that I got cancer. Wow. I am so sorry to hear that. That is crazy. It's weird. Every other place is... I can't put sunscreen on my body or else I burn. So I was like, well, I can use it on my nose. Now I've got nasal cancer. Right. And the one place you can. It's right. It. Well, you got a lot of people going to be praying for you, Chris. Oh, Absolutely. Thank you. thank you. So if I were to come back on y'all's show or something, don't be surprised. They said I will be um, like Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer for a while. Well, that's okay because you're doing wonderful things with makeup. Yes. Because I can't, I can't even tell. So, Thank there you. you go. You're going to be beautiful no matter what. So. Thank you. <laughs> it's not going to matter. It's not going to matter. So, did you have, did you have a feeling about it? Did you have like, you're like something's not right, or, I mean, you that just that intuition. You know what I mean? Oh yes, but I have some of the oddest health issues. They say I have autoimmune diseases that they have no idea what it is. Um, after the, 
I know going out into the meadow and I don't, I'm not saying this has anything to do with it, but once I start investigating, I notice health issues, odd health yep. issues that nobody could diagnose made no sense yep. whatsoever. And other teammates have as well. But I, um, I had some lung disease. I was on home oxygen. They said, get my affairs in order. Um, I was having weird like fevers, rashes, just sick, couldn't breathe. Well, I mean, could breathe, but very hard time breathing. Was in the hospital and they said it was autoimmune. And one of the things was ulcerations, my nose and just weirdness. So I felt like something was wrong, but doctors kept saying it's nothing. It's autoimmune. You're fine. But then six years of having these places that kept getting worse, I finally went to dermatology, a different dermatologist. And he looked, he's like, yeah, those are cancerous areas. I'm like, no, it's not. <laughs> I come in for wound care and figure out some way to hide these places. He's like, no, it, it looks like cancer. I mean, odd cancer, but um, they've had five cases in 20 years of this kind of cancer. Wow. So... I mean, I kind of felt like something was wrong when something wouldn't heal, but I trusted the physicians that it was autoimmune and related to my weird health issues. Right. That That is weird. That is yeah. weird. Now, you said some of the people that you went to the meadow with have had strange illnesses? Yes, yeah, yes. Bob just died. Yeah, yeah. Bob, he didn't have cancer until he went there. Mm -hmm. Yes, that, um, Tim... Uh, drop dead of where they're thinking a heart attack or really not sure. Mm -hmm. I'm not quite sure, but he passed sudden cardiac arrest. And I know Matt and Angelia, we work with them and part of the team, but Angelia had an odd experience happen. Her and Matt, when they were out with Travis Walton and something happened, um, there was apparently UFO activity. And right after that, Angelia was diagnosed with glioblastoma, brain cancer. And then Matt had some type of ab really odd blood dyscrasia. Oh. Yeah. So, I mean, we're not saying everything ties back to these paranormal. It's um, it's, it, it's, it, it's not, it's not a thing to dismiss either because you're not talking about a little uh, allergy, you know yeah. what? I, you're not talking about a little something you developed after going there. You're talking about life-threatening things that are happening. Yeah, another. Well, team and it's not just like it's one people, eat one person. Right. Yeah. It's the whole group of you. Right, and of course, a lot of the team will carry like Geiger counters now, and so we're seeing spikes of radiation when something happens, like not just a little lip here and there, but dangerous levels. Mm -hmm. So is that influencing health? Uh, it, it it's worth checking out yeah. to see how much radiation your body can take in these little blips that you're running into. Mm -hmm. How much, how much can your body take before it will cause some damage? Yeah. Yep. And then high eel meth fields. I mean, we don't know what we're experiencing out there. No. I, I know a lot of people have health issues. Um, we're not trying to blame the medical issues on paranormal, but we, we're trying to, I mean, there's some odd correlations between it. Well, you know, because we had uh we had Thomas Winterton on, on our show. And I've watched I've watched that show. It's one of my favorites. And they were talking about having strange illnesses and things happening out there to their people. So it makes you just wonder, you know, mm -hmm. does that need more investigation um to figure out if if that that is partly the issue? Yes. Hmm. I don't know, Tex, there's another show. <laughs> I'm just saying. Uh, I'm not I'm not so educated when it comes to the radiation spikes and the damage that you know that can occur, but there is there I do believe it. Uh, you know, it's not just coincidence. <clears throat> I'm not blaming everything on it, but it it's very odd. It is that. 
There's that. And, uh, hey, let's get to some questions and comments real quick. We got a few minutes left. Yeah, let's get a few minutes of that. There we go. Um, Abbott Hoffman, have have you seen black squids in autopsies since the video? I'm not sure what they're talking. Have you seen black squids in autopsies? I don't know what that one is. I, I guess uh, we've lost the context of it. It probably, it's probably something that was said. Yeah. Let's see. I'm, uh, this may sound awful, but I'm Googling it. See if I did I miss <laughs> something. <laughs> uh, it, it is possible. Like I said, it just depends on what we were yeah. talking about at the time. Morgan says, when my mom was in hospice, she pointed at an empty chair and said, the lady over there says, I'm not going to live long. I said, what lady? The nurse that just left? She said, no. There were. She said her, and there wasn't anybody there. Wow. Oh. You know, because that, that always yeah. reminds me of, if, if it's not a loved one that comes, it's, it's yeah. someone else coming to get them. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's uh, yeah, to make the transition not smooth. Yeah. Bad. No, it's just mm -hmm. to make the transition smooth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, Mr. Knack says, if you die in an Alabama prison, the prison gets your organs before your body is released to the family. Law lawmakers are working on making this a felony. What? It's weird. Well, why would they do that? Oh. Profit. Profit. They can sell those money, things. Money, money, yes. money. Money, money. Oh. Yes. Sell them, sell them. Really? Yep. Gosh. Gosh, you know, you know, selling kidneys and livers and yeah. lungs, hearts. But yeah, yeah, you get yeah. it. You get the shell of your person back. That's all you get. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I want to give a quick thank you to Liberty. Thank you for the awesome super chat. Yes. Um, and Pixie times two. Thank you for the extended membership and the gift of memberships. Mm -hmm. And Sweetie Pie, thank you for the super sticker. And Andrew and Gnomes Trucking, thank you for the super sticker. Y'all are awesome. Thank you so much, guys. Y'all have some giving folks on here. That's so awesome. It's very humbling. Very yeah. humbling. Yeah. Well, I don't know, Tex. I think we should probably call it a night. Yeah. Um, I mean, it was fun. It was just fun talking stories. I mean, mm -hmm. yeah. I always like to get off topic sometimes and just talk these kind of stories because, you know, we all figured it out. Real life is just as shocking as anything. Yeah. Stranger than fiction. You're right. You are mm -hmm. absolutely right. And I really enjoyed it. Well, Kristen, I always enjoyed talking to you anyway. So. Oh, well, thank you. Same, same to y'all. Both y'all. Yeah. This, it wasn't more of a, we kind of steered off topic of the normal paranormal, Bigfoot portal yeah. weirdness. And it's fine. And it's absolutely fine. It was, it's a different show. Well, I mean, you yeah. know, because Tex does infamous minds. So, I mean, we stray quite a bit. <laughs> we stray quite mm -hmm. a bit. Yeah. And there was a, Danielle had her Dimension show on right before the front porch and had mm -hmm. Duke on with her. It's a great show. Great show. He's got a documentary coming out and everything and got some pictures from it and stuff. So, y'all go check that out too. Mm -hmm. um, and, don't forget Monica's second episode of her show is coming up Thursday. And uh, like I said, y'all going to start seeing a lot more of me. So be prepared for that. Watch. Be sure you turn on your your uh, alert bells because, yeah, they'll be coming in. You don't want to miss techs out there fishing and having a great time while you're mm -hmm. stuck at work. Mm -hmm. That's right. Uh -huh. That's right. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I get it. <laughs> um, a lot of prayers going out for a lot of people. Like I said, it's been a weird couple of weeks. Kristen, prayers to you too. Absolutely. Uh, um, Y'all stay safe out there. Um, yeah, it's going to be a weird uh, another week or two. So it, we're in. Uh, we got I just have to say we're in uh, Mercury retrograde. So if anybody's familiar with that, you know that this is just a crazy time for people. Um, it's, it just basically means that, um, you need to, to 
make decisions and the hard decisions in life and everything's in a chaotic mess right now but it's supposed to smooth out towards the end of the retrograde don't worry so just keep that in mind so it's all crazy now and including the uh, eclipse and this retrograde is just making it hell on wheels so forgive people who are uh, not so kind you know just just relax you know just take a deep breath don't get upset you know just let things pass in a few weeks we'll all be good right yeah. Kristen thank you so much again um, and you're welcome back anytime and we will definitely have you back on you Sounds know um, awesome. thank y'all y'all be careful and we'll catch y'all on the flip side okay bye everybody bye. not everybody